Hey, hey, hey. Welcome. Yes, to another round of you. It's Mr. Orr here at your service. Como están? Hey, little espanol for you guys. You know what? We are here with a big dolphin. Yes, and what are you doing? My goodness, you are huge. Dude, you're huge. You're blocking something here. You're blocking the main picture of our math. We gotta shrink you down. Shrinky. Call you Shrinky. Min miniaturize you here. There you go. See, you're blocking the girl with her bicycle. Come on, dude. Hey, where's your water? You know, you don't have any water? How you... <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, don't dolphins need water? Yes. Okay, you know what? We're going to just kind of set you... Where can we put you? Can we make you, like, super small? Don't take us personal, but we're going to make you really tiny. Oh, look, I'm a little dolphin stuffed animal. Yeah. No, okay. Mr. Wara, don't you have a math to do do? Indeed I do. Well, thank you for letting me know that. Okay, as you can see, we are looking at Lesson 6.3. And our topic of the day is Estimate Fraction Sums and Differences. Okay, so we're going to get into that estimation thing again, but not with whole numbers and kind of like we, have, we did when we were estimating quotients. We did some of that kind of stuff and products. Okay, let's take a look deep inside our essential question. How can you make reasonable estimates of fraction sums and differences? Folks, this is our learning target. Okay, this is our objective. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our problem. Unlock the problem. Okay, it says, Kimberly will be riding her bike to school this year. The distance from her house to the end of the street is one sixth mile. The distance from the end of the street to the school is three-eighths mile. About how far is Kimberly's house from school? Very nice. Well, immediately I can't help but think to myself, Mr. Wara, that word about. About how far. About a very important key word in math, which makes me think that we're looking for an estimate. Okay, so we're not going to be trying to figure out the exact answer. We're just trying to find out about. Sometimes that comes in handy. And what I'm trying to do right now is I'm actually trying to address mathematical practice number one. Yes. And voila, there you are. Where did you come from? <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at what mathematical practice one says. It says that we make sense of problems and we persevere in solving them. Okay, it says when I'm presented with a problem, I can make a plan, carry out my plan, and evaluate its success. Yes, look at before, during, and after. But you can explain the problem to myself, which is I was explaining that the word about kind of meant that we needed to have an estimate and, or that we needed to estimate. And then of course, during, you're going to want to per persevere. We don't want to just give up, right? We want to get through it. We want to keep looking at our work. If this plan doesn't make sense, can I move on to something else? And then, of course, after, always check your work. I am telling you, my friends, checking your work, huge in math, because if you're not checking your work at the end of that calculation or process by solving a problem and always checking back to see what you're doing, it's like you're watching yourself. I'm watching me. There you go. All right. And like that, we are back to our problem. So it says that we can use benchmarks to find reasonable estimates by rounding fractions to zero, one half, or one. Place a point at one six on the number line. Okay, and it says now we have the one six on the number line. So let me explain how these fractions were put on this particular number line. Now, if you look at the very first spot, it says 0 over 6. Well, the fraction 0 over 6 is an equivalent to the benchmark of 0, right? Because 0 divided by 6 equals 0. Sorry, it just, that's how it is. And it's the beginning part, and that's a benchmark because it's the starting point, right? Now, when you look at the number line, you can see that there's 3 6 right there in the middle. And we talked about this, too, when we looked at other... Uh, other videos and other problems that, you know, 3 is like half of 6. Hence, 3 6 is an equivalent fraction for 1 half. So that's, again, another great benchmark because that puts us right in the middle. How nice is that? 
And then, of course, you can see all the other fractions in between from 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, and of course, 6 over 6, 6 divided by 6, that equals 1. So there we have our fractions, and that's how those fractions ended up on that number line. Now, what's interesting about this is this does make me think of, yes, it makes me think of a mathematical practice. Voila! That's right, the mathematical practice number 7. Numero siete. It says look for and make use of structure. That's what we were doing with our number line. We were looking at the structure and how that number line was divided and how we're looking at benchmark fractions. It says I can see and understand how numbers and spaces are organized and put together as parts and wholes. See how they've been divided? Look, we've got them divided in six. Each group of one sixth. And note that there's the equal distance between each one of those. That's important with fractions. When we divide that number line into six, we are dividing that number line into equal parts. And that equal part is one six in this particular case. So here it says the fraction is between, and then we have a blank and blank. It says the fraction one sixth is closer to the benchmark blank. So we're going to round to that. So the fraction is between, if we look at one sixth, it's between zero and one half. That's right. And if that's what you were thinking, then you are on track, my friend. It says the fraction one sixth is closer to the benchmark zero, which it is. So it's asking us to round to zero. It's actually really close to zero. Now, when we go to step two, it says place a point at three eighths on the number line. All right, let's put a point there. Did it tell us to put a point on the other one? It did, and I did not do that. Mr. Wara, we caught you. Okay, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to put a point on three eighths. I'm going to follow the instructions. And then it says the fraction is between, again, we have two benchmark uh, fractions that we we're looking at zero, right? Zero over eight, zero eighths. And in this case, it looks like it's between the other benchmark fraction of one half, which is four eighths. So we're going to call that fraction is between zero and, and we're going to call it one half. We're not going to call that four eighths because the benchmark fraction that we identify with is one half. And then here it says the fraction three eighths is closer to the benchmark. That's right. I bet you can tell by looking at the number line. It's closer to one half. See? Did you like my blinking arrow there? Okay, round two, we're going to round to one half. Isn't this easy? Yes, yes, yes. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Okay, step three says add the rounded fractions. This should be pretty easy. One sixth we said was going to be zero. And we come to three eighths, we look across and it says plus. And we said that was going to be one half. And of course, one half plus zero. Hmm, do I need a calculator? No, I don't think so. I think I could just put in one half. Yes. So it says so, Kimberly's house is about... That's right. If you think it's one half, then you, my friend, are... you're a winner. Yes. Okay, now, we're already done with the first page. Wow. Let's go to the next page and see what's happening. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, what's going on here? What, we have a closed curtain? Hmm. I haven't used these shades in a very long time. This is very suspicious, if you ask me. Let's take a look. I'm afraid. <gasps> Do you see what I see? Oh, what is this? Shark! Oh, no. It's not a shark. They're dolphins! What? What's this? A pool party? Are you serious? Oh, this is... That's great. Okay, so you love to play in pods. You're a pod of dolphins. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, excuse me, guys. You know what? <laughs> this party is over. Sorry. Yes, it's time for you guys to go by. Okay, you're taking this pool somewhere else. Yes. And I think... Whew! Oh, my goodness. My good. <laughs> Can you believe it? You know, these little feature animals of the day, you know, they're really taking over my my videos now i mean it's almost as if they somehow think that they actually are teaching these videos you know i mean <laughs> yeah good one my friend okay yeah take your pool somewhere else all right another way that we could do these problems is to use mental math 
Now it says you can compare the numerator and the denominator to round a fraction and find a reasonable estimate. Okay, we look up here, it says estimate. It says 9 tenths minus 5 eighths. So it says, first of all, step one is that we could round 9 tenths. Think the numerator is about the same as the denominator. That's true. Look at the numerator is 9 and the denominator is 10. That's very close. And we know that if we have 10 over 10, we have a whole, one whole. So now we have the one whole. Now it says step two, it says think the numerator is about, wait a second, didn't I just put, okay, I was sure I wrote proto number one there, didn't I? I did, didn't I? Okay, let me just do that again then. Okay, number one. I don't know, maybe I'm just kind of seeing things. I don't know what's going on. Well, sure, I put a one there. Okay, so step two says round five eighths and think the numerator, what, it's gone again? Hey, what's, oh, magic pen. <gasps> Mr. Water, you're so slow. It's the magic pen. You can be fooled so easily. <laughs> That's right. I'm very gullible. Okay, we'll put a one there. Okay, thank you. Now step two says round five eighths. Okay, think the numerator is about half of the denominator. That's true. Man, half of eight would be four, and five is really close to that. So if I were to round the fraction five eighths, I could use that benchmark fraction. Because we were talking about our benchmark fractions, that we had that zero. We have one half and one whole. Those we call benchmark fractions, okay? And now we move to step three, subtract. So we said nine tenths was about one. We said that five eighths is about one half. Well, one whole minus one half is one half because two halves make a whole, yes. And then we have that, so that's gonna be about one half. Oh my goodness. Could this be any easier? I would think not. You guys are just gonna rock with this stuff. Got to show a model. Then you can, okay? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, all right. What do we have down here? Just the last part of this lesson. It says try this. Estimate, estimate. So what I would do if I were you, and of course I wouldn't because you know what, I'm not. I'm Mr. Wara. I would actually try this on your own and see what you get. Use a model if you need to and then take a look at what you think your estimate. You can match it up with mine. Just put the video on pause, right? It'll give you a break. Get a snack. No, I'm just kidding. Don't get too carried away. Now, okay, it's like we're back, although it was only a couple seconds. Okay, two and seven eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna do some quick rounding, but I'm thinking of a benchmark. So when I look at two and seven eighths, I'm looking at a whole number two, but you want to know something? Seven eighths is so close to being another whole because eight eighths is eight divided by eight. And that's one. That means another whole. And so I could actually say that that's almost like two plus one. In my mind, I'm just, I know I could add this in my brain. And then I'm going to subtract. And here it looks like two fifths. Well, half of five, right, is about two and a half. And I have two. And that's pretty close to a half. See where I'm going with this? So what do I have now? It looks like I have three right here minus one half. Well, if I have something where I have three of and I'm gonna take away half of it, well, it's gonna leave me with two and one half. That is my final answer. I have one whole, so I know I have at least one, and then I have eight ninths. Mm, there we go again, eight ninths. Eight is so close to nine, it's almost another whole. That means I have two. One plus another one is two. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I'm teaching kindergarten. Okay, boys and girls, there's one apple and another apple. How many apples do you have? Just kidding. Okay, I'm going to add. Now I have four holes and then I have eight tenths. Well, eight is still really close to 10 because half of 10 is five and this is way above five, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna say that's another hole. So four plus four more hole, that means I'm going to have five. Look at this. Here we go. Kindergarten standard. What is two plus five? I have two add-ins. It gives me a sum of seven. Yes, can you see this wonderful math? Okay, sorry. I don't know why I'm in this mood, really. Was it the hot chocolate? I'm not sure. Anyway, though, you know what? It's another end. End to another video. The endings just keep happening. But you know what, my friends? I appreciate you coming along with me and exploring mathematics. Now, live long and prosper.